All right, what's up everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access, and today we have the honor and privilege to have Mr. Sir Jinx coming hey, back in man. the building. Thank you, man. Cheers. Yes. My guy. Always a pleasure with Jinx, man. And I'm glad you have me back, man. Always. We're gonna have you back for part three. I heard it was a few requests yes. in the uh so the, the, in great, the comments. The great thing is people loved the first round of interviews we did. Oh, I saw that. And it's it's just great that you're coming back because I've known Jinx since the 90s, and right. obviously was listening and studying him way before that. So there's so right. much to talk about every time with Jinx, and we'll never run out of topics. But today, because of all the comments, we're going to talk a lot about his work with Cool G Rap, because a lot of people cool Rap. wanted to see that. But one thing we didn't talk about last time that I really wanted to was Short Dogs in the House. Oh, yeah. Because Too Short, I think, is one of the best rappers of all time. He's one of my favorite rappers of all time. Yeah. And you did phenomenal work on that album with Q, nothing right. but a word. Yeah. So this was also an interesting time because the album came out in 90, but it was around uh, coming off of the NWA ruthless movement and all that. And right. Short was running parallel with that right. at the same time. And Quiet as Kept was as big sell sales wise right as them <laughs> i think he was on jive before he was but on it was on jive. dangerous records i think yeah dangerous music dangerous music and but um he, the crazy thing about too short bro is too short was the first rapper that i heard go down south go to new york go you know to the midwest and everybody knew his lyrics mm -hmm. like so when we was traveling like with um like, you know, Big Daddy Kane and Kid and Play and, you know, Salt and Pepper and stuff, you know, some some of their, their rhymes is made a certain kind of way, but Two Short Rhymes was like mad open so people could understand what he was saying. And I saw a bunch of like New York people just astounded, like they never heard of him and the whole crowd, boom, boom. Oh, clap, boom, boom. Keep it oh. short but funky. It was, oh man, it was, a, it was a good sight that I saw that that happened to, uh, um, that happened to Too Short. And also NWA was on the show. So when we was back when we, on tour, when we went, we started in the East Coast and then the East Coast rappers that was on the tour, they end up, you know, being the closers. Right. So as we start coming west, they start moving them further back in the show. Like, okay. you know what I'm saying? Start moving too short in NWA. Cause it's like they was like, we went to one show and uh after too short in WA, I think like Ghetto Boys or something, they everybody just like like left the building. Like, wow. Like they was performing <laughs> in front of the seats. That's but, who they were there to see. I mean, cause, yeah, but so they had to figure it out. I remember New York dudes were so mad that they had to lose they they headline and spot. Oh <laughs> man, that was beautiful. And too short and NWA did that. They were the first rappers that moved to the back of an East Coast tour. Because if not, the people's gonna leave. But right. that was just at that time, you know. So right, they, right. they did have a good thing. But the easy E and the too short, oh man, that was a, that was a, a show you had to see. That was the essence of uh, hip hop, you know, for the West Coast when we started uh, doing real shit. Like, so Jinx, after doing these tours or in the midst of these tours with Short and seeing what Short was doing to the crowds and then Easy's mm -hmm. impact on the crowd, and seeing that their flows were so different from some of the other artists that were mm -hmm. prominent at the time, how would you say that affected how you approached or thought of producing? Well, I would. I that we was all banging the same concept, you know? So to see one of us make it, it's still the conversation of the West Coast. The West Coast still had to prove our opinion on, on, on music and, and hip hop. And I know that like the East Coast, it, it came from the East Coast, but when we gave our version, it seemed like we were being a little more, there was being a little more critical on how we were approaching the music. And to see that the fans were the judge was 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 that 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 was that was a that was a good feeling because right. you don't know. I mean, when you when you put something together and you say, well, this is where we from, and we're gonna go out there and we're gonna push our line. You don't know it could be not accepted very well. Right. You know, I didn't see people go out of town. You know, go out balling, come back crawling. 
You know, <laughs> they thought it was easy to, to uh, you know, go to Memphis or go to Atlanta and think you just finna take over the club back in them days. That was a zero. <laughs> they had their own shit going on. But if they like you, then, you know, then there's people that go to college or there's people that move around throughout the United States that, you know, took that West Coast with them. And then it reminded them, like Florida and stuff like that. It, it looked the same. So um, I just felt, I felt like my, my voice was going to be heard through the music. Like I, I used to listen to music and make the music sound like that's somebody's eyes. Like I'm, I'm looking through every dude eyes that when I make when I was making beats at, at that time and when you walk into a room that it's a you know your body has a, a instrumental that plays every time mm -hmm. you think you look good you know what I'm saying <laughs> you think you look nice it's like you hear it, you singing it to yourself you know and when I made beats I always wanted them beats to be that world like those dudes eyes I wanted to be like gangster dudes and the motorcycle guys and the graffiti guys and the break dancing guys I was being the eyes for all them through the beat and then I dealt with the rapper to make me want to do beats I wanted to, to speak for a certain class of hip-hop guys from the west coast because I thought you know we were good I, I, I thought we you know, we learn from the East Coast, but uh, you know, it's all like fighting. There's a different kind of techniques. This right. is a, one technique. You know, you, you guys got that technique. Down South got their own technique. You know, and then when you sit on your grind and you do it, you know, you be happy for the fruits of the labor. And you be like, yeah, we 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 came in this game to sell records. That's what we came to do. You know, now to make friends and kiss babies. That's whatever. <laughs> That's cool. But everybody, whoever made money off a of rap, that was something that wasn't invented, you know, 40 years ago. That right. was not a job to seek after to be a rapper, you know. So when the people like it, then the people are the judge. And I and I at first New York had a real grip on what could be dope and what was perceived dope. But um, West Coast just start having a little more fun with it, you know, adding a little more baseline, add a little more piano and strings and I remember a couple of my New York guys it was like has he's like your music is, is mad musical <laughs> like that's because at first it was boom bap like boom bap. you know it was hard and we added like the groove to it so I, I believe West Coast you know um, East Coast made up hip-hop made up the format West Coast made up how to sell it mm. down south got the best hooks of all time I would agree yeah. They definitely do. They got the and best have hooks of all time. For a long time. And they add it to, you know, this 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 thing called hip hop. They they did put their mark in there, you know. You got Houston, but that's still down south, but they still was not East Coast rappers. You, right. you didn't have to be an East Coast rapper to get on. That's what they put in our head. Like if in LA, back in the day, you know a dude from New York and he was in your group, oh yeah, I was gonna get a record deal. Right. Like it was, it was really gonna happen for you. But that's how everybody thought of it. But then when they, East Coast, down South, Miami, everybody started knowing that we got the same kind of ghettos, you know, then we started connecting. Be like, well, I like his voice. I like his attempt at his, what he doing as a rapper. I like his aspect of understanding. Like, mm -hmm. you can have a Just Ice that was going on, and then you have a Too Short. You know, they, they from two separate things, but to me, they say they speak in the same thing, but it's just like another language. You know? Right, right. And we was liking the language of the West Coast. Well, of course, the whole world. The whole world. <laughs> the whole does. world like the way the West Coast sounds. So I just was happy to be a part of, uh, just being a part of the beginning of something. You know what I'm saying? Like that was always a blessing to me. And seeing all the guys that come out of it, and the rap guys, the producer guys, and you know, we all connected. You know, back in the day, West Coast was a little divided. But now that we all older, everybody can call. I call DJ Quick. I call, you know, Battle Cat. You know, I call Daz just to see what he's doing. You know, and that, that's the dope thing about how long we've been in this rap game and banging this West Coast, and with Dre, of course. Of course. And then uh, before we get to Kooji rap, one other thing with right. uh, none but a word to me. That was to me like one of those early records of the combination of Titans to be mm -hmm. Titans in the making. So what did you notice about how Short worked versus how Cube worked and what made that song so special? Well, the, 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 the cold thing is like um, um, Too Short reminded me of Eric, 
like reminded okay. me of Easy E. Like they was both kind of the same kind of thing. So, but when Too Short came around and I started seeing him, he had bread. So he was like with him and Pizzo and and, and Too Clean, right? Mm -hmm. But he had bread though. So that that that's what stood out because he was he. I don't know. It looked like he had more bread than Cube, like, because the back in them days, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We ain't talking now. We said, well, I don't know either. I ain't going to call nobody <laughs> pockets. But I'm just saying he had a lot of money then. He already was doing independent, it. doing, selling records on, on you, know, street, you know, street tapes or whatever. Mm -hmm. So he always had money. So um, even when we went on tour, he had his own tour buses and, you know, he was doing it big. Like, we had to keep up with him on how he was doing it. And he set the pace when all the East Coast dudes used to be like on in vans and and uh you know they had can you know convoy across the three uh, across the United States and they'd stay like in a red roof inn or something or, or you know like a lodge type shit. Right. Easy and too short. You can check the records. Easy and too short changed how rappers travel. Hmm. I was there. Okay. So anything before '90, if you was like. You know, a big a big artist like you know Heavy D or you know they 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 stayed in a certain kind of thing. But the the mega rappers just they didn't have no tour buses. Right, they right. had vans and they were staying over there <laughs> right off the freeway. But easy right off the exit, right off the exit, <laughs> right there. Everybody can check easy out. Easy in, Tennessee. easy out. Yeah, easy in, easy out. But Eric <laughs> and Too Short, they set the pace because uh, Eric was paying for it. And it, I mean, we was on tour. You know, we get good with somebody on tour. And they were like, where you at? Oh, we at Sheraton. Where y'all at? Word? Oh, wow, that's crazy. Nah, <laughs> come up there, man. Come hang out. You know, and then we had and that was the beginning of tearing up the hotels. Like, mm. you know, when people start of our kind start flooding them them situations that they never thought they were gonna see all these niggas in this motherfucker <laughs> hotel. <laughs> and Eric would do that, because you know, back in the day, if you remember, um, um, and they said, you know, I had everybody thinking I was only, you know, I was born in 73. Right. Now everybody want to know the AGE. -E. So at that time, he would have been 15 years old. Right. So now it's kids in the hotel looking for Easy e thinking like he a Justin Bieber, like he's a kid. <laughs> so that was one side. And then the NWA, the bitches a bitch and, you know, Ren and, you know, all the stuff that they were doing that brought the older people and okay. the gangsters and the I ain't going to take this in my city. People came, right. you know, now, this is my hood. <laughs> right, right. And then we got kids. I swear to God, I will, I will, uh, if somebody can plug up some little sensors to me and you can re see that, man, it looks like it looks crazy. Little kids like we're easy e and <laughs> girls, you know, twenty and older, like yo, where Ice Cube at, you know, with these <laughs> the age difference was crazy. <laughs> but That's Eric wild. definitely uh, uh, had us out there on tour buses and stuff like that, and I saw the change of hip hop and how we influence East Coast, just like East Coast in influence us, you know, and well, it, it worked. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of Gangster Rap features exclusive interviews with Ice-T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The History of Gangster Rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip-hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was, I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. It will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV back Yo MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. There's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.